Welcome to this video lecture series on antenna and wave propagation. In this video, we will discuss the next two cases of two point antenna array. In my previous video, I took the case of two isotropic point sources of same amplitude and same phase with two cases. The reference was at center and the reference was at one of the antenna. Now in this video, we will take two cases. First is when the two isotropic sources of same amplitude and opposite phase and in the second case I am taking two isotropic sources of same amplitude and phase quadrature. So we will discuss these two cases in detail. So we will begin our discussion with the first case in which we are taking opposite phase and same amplitude of two isotropic point sources. So in these two cases I am taking my reference to be at the center. So in this case and this case I am taking my reference at the center point of two antenna. So if I have antenna 1 and antenna 2 having distance d between them, I am taking the reference at distance d by 2 from antenna 1 as well as distance d by 2 from antenna 2. Now I am considering these two to be point sources. So I am taking a far off point P which is at an angle phi. I am taking the distance between reference and point P to be R. Now I need to find out which ray is leading and which ray is lagging when my both of the antennas antenna 1 and antenna 2 are radiating. So when antenna 1 and antenna 2 are radiating as you can see from this diagram that the radiations from antenna 1 would reach the point P faster than the radiations from an imaginary antenna which is placed at reference than antenna 2. So now I can say that one antenna is leading with respect to reference and antenna 2 and two antenna is lagging with respect to reference and antenna 1. So I need to find out how much these are leading and how much these are lagging with respect to each other. So I need to find out the measurement of these phase differences. So when I see the far off point P I can say that these radiations are parallel to each other and these radiation can be represented by a line. So I can represent the radiations from antenna 1 and antenna 2 by straight lines. So when I see the magnified view of this diagram I get this diagram. Now when I see this diagram I see that antenna 1 and antenna 2 are radiating at R we don't have any antenna I am considering an imaginary antenna to be placed at R so these three are radiating and I am considering these three radiation to be in the form of straight line which are parallel to each other so the radiations from antenna 1 are leading and radiations from antenna 2 are lagging as we saw from that diagram so I need to find the measure so I draw a perpendicular from reference to antenna 2 and from 1 to reference. So when I need to find out this measurement I would see that if decrease this line my radiation would travel equal distance in equal time. So if my radiation from R is at this point and antenna 1 is at this point these two travel at the same time so there would be no phase difference so the only phase difference is this in this case and similarly if I consider 2 and R the only phase difference would be this so I know that this distance is d by 2 also this distance is also d by 2 so because this distance was perpendicular distance this angle was 90 degree so this angle is phi, this distance is d by 2, this is 90 degree. So in this right angle triangle, I get this distance which is d by 2 cos phi. Again similarly, I get this distance which is d by 2 cos phi because this is d by 2, this is phi and this is 90 degree. So the total phase difference between antenna 1 and antenna 2 would be proportional to the phase difference between 2 and r plus the phase difference between 1 and r. So the phase difference between 2 and r is d by 2 cos phi and the phase difference between 1 and r is d by 2 cos phi. So adding these two I will get the phase difference between 1 and 2. 
so the total phase difference between 1 and 2 would be proportional to d by 2 cos phi plus d by 2 cos phi so i can write that the total phase difference would be proportional to d cos phi so when i need to find out the actual phase difference i would remove this sign of proportionality and i would get a proportionality constant where beta is the constant of proportionality now i need to see the phasor diagram so in the phasor diagram i know the reference is made parallel to x axis so i make the reference parallel to x axis now i need to see how much antenna 1 is leading and how much antenna 2 is lagging with respect to reference so the factor psi is equal to beta d cos phi where i need to find out psi by 2 it would be equal to beta d by 2 cos phi now i know that antenna 1 is leading with respect to reference with factor d by 2 cos phi which is equal to psi by 2 so now i can represent the source 1 to be in anti clockwise direction psi by 2 similarly i can represent the source 2 which is lagging with respect to reference with clockwise psi by 2 so again i am taking the same amplitude so the same current would be passing through both of the antennas i1 is equal to i2 is equal to i0 and now when i am taking two antennas to be similar the impedance of the two antennas would be similar so i can say by ohm's law that e1 is equal to e2 is equal to e0 so now i can say that antenna 1 is having e0 electric field and antenna 2 is having e0 electric field as well so i can find out that the magnitude of electric field of source 1 would be e0 and source 2 would be e0 and the phasor angle would be represented by e raised to power plus j psi by 2 here e raised to power minus j psi by 2 but now in this case i have opposite phase so how can i make the opposite phase when the source 2 is at pi above or pi below the source 2 so now i am taking the opposite of source 2 which is i can subtract pi or i can add pi now when i am taking pi to be subtracted so it could be represented as e raised to power minus j psi by 2 minus pi so e naught e raised to power minus j psi by 2 minus j pi so now when i took minus as common my electric field could be represented as e naught e raised to power minus j psi by 2 plus pi so when i need to find out the outcome of this phasor diagram i would add the magnitude and phase of source 1 and the magnitude and phase of opposite of source 2 which is e naught e raised to power minus j psi by 2 plus pi so the final so the final e would be e naught e raised to power j psi by 2 which is e so the final e would be e naught e raised to power j psi by 2 which is from source 1 and e naught e raised to power minus j psi by 2 plus pi which is from the opposite of source 2 so now when i need to find out the simplified version of this electric field i'll take e naught to be common so when i again need to simplify this i would expand this so what it would look like now because i know that if the powers are in addition i'll get the multiplied versions so if i have e raised to power minus j psi by 2 plus pi i can represent it as e raised to power minus j psi by 2 into e raised to power minus j pi so now i know that e raised to power minus j pi is equal to minus 1 so putting this in this equation i'll get so now formula for sin theta looks like now replacing these terms considering psi by 2 is equal to theta so i'll get e raised to power j theta minus e raised to power minus j theta i'll get this term so replacing it with taking 2j this side 
टू जे साइन थीटा सो ई वुड लुक लाइक नाउ थीटा इन दिस केस वॉज साय बाय टू सो आई विल गेट द फाइनल इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड नाउ आई कैन टेक द वैल्यू ऑफ साय द वैल्यू ऑफ साय वॉज बीटा डी कॉस फाइव इन विच बीटा वॉज टू पाई बाय लैमडा एंड आई एम टेकिंग टू केसेज ऑफ डी फर्स्ट केस इज वेन डी इज इक्वल टू लैमडा बाय टू एंड सेकेंड केस इज वेन डी इज इक्वल टू लैमडा सो नाउ कैलकुलेटिंग साय इन दीज टू केसेज साय वुड लुक लाइक beta which is 2 pi by lambda into d which is lambda by 2 cos phi and here psi would look like beta which is 2 pi by lambda into d which is lambda into cos phi so which is equal to now putting these values in this equation i'll get the equation for e so the equation for e in this case would be and the value of e in this case would be now when i put the different value of psi to find out the final electric field i would get the radiation pattern which look like this and here the radiation pattern would look like this Now in this radiation pattern I am getting the maxima at 0 and 180 degree only but here I am getting the maxima at 60 120 240 and 300 values of psi so I can see by changing the value of d I get the different radiation pattern now I'll see the two isotropic sources of same amplitude and phase quadrature Now I am considering source two is lagging by a phase pi by four and source one is leading by a phase pi by four. So source two was represented by e naught e raised to power minus j psi by two. Now I can subtract minus j pi by four. So it would represent it as e naught e raised to power minus j pi by four plus psi by two. Similarly here I add pi by four. So it can be represented as e naught e raised to power j. pi by 4 plus psi by 2 now the total electric field of this system would be represented as now i'll consider pi by 4 plus psi by 2 to be equal to theta now it would be represented as e not e raised to power j theta plus e not e raised to power minus j theta now simplifying this i'll get I know that from the formula for of cos theta, which looks like this. So the formula for cos theta is this, where e raised to power j theta plus e raised to power minus j theta upon two is cos theta. So I can replace this e raised to power j theta plus e raised to power minus j theta with two cos theta. So the e would look like. Now again replacing theta with its value, which was. pi by 4 plus psi by 2 so now i get the electric field in this case now putting the value of psi which is psi is beta d cos phi i'll get the final radiation pattern so i'll put the various value of d now when i put d is equal to lambda by 2 i'll get the radiation pattern which looks like this so now when i put d is equal to lambda by 4 my radiation pattern would look like this so i can see that by changing the value of d and varying different value of phi to find out the radiation pattern i get different value of radiations for different value of d which is lambda by 2 and lambda by 4 so this is how i can find out the final radiation pattern of two isotropic point sources of same amplitude and opposite phase and same amplitude and phase quadrature so i'll stop at this point for this video in the next video i'll take some other cases and then i'll summarize this thing 
सो आई होप यू लाइक दिस वीडियो लाइक दिस वीडियो सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड स्टे ट्यून फॉर द फर्दर वीडियोज थैंक यू